I'm Lisa Clark. Welcome and thank you for joining us for this webcast. If you are one of the millions of Americans diagnosed with heart disease, you can turn to your doctors for help, change your diet to help, and take prescription drugs or nutritional supplements to help. But there's one more weapon in your arsenal against heart disease, and it's all in your mind. Learning how to recognize and reduce stress is an important tool in reducing your risk of heart disease. And for the next few moments, we'll discuss ways to help you do just that. Joining us for this discussion, Nate Lebowitz, a cardiologist and assistant clinical professor at New York Presbyterian Hospital, Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons. Welcome, Nate. Also joining us, Sam Benjamin. He's the director for the Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine at State University of New York, Stony Brook. He's also one of the founders of Mariposa, which is a natural supplement company. Thank you, Sam, for joining us. And we all talk about being stressed, but what is it exactly? How is it measured? And what does it do to your heart? There's clear evidence that people who are the so-called type A personality, and that's not a, uh, a general thing. That's not somebody who's just you know, under stress. There are specific indicators of what is a type A personality, some of which are perfectionism, time pressure, uh, and a number of other things. But people who are type A personality clearly are at much higher risk of developing coronary heart disease. We found that the mind pay, plays a powerful role uh, in the coronary arteries and in the rhythms of the heart as well. Now there's something that your body releases when you are in a state of stress? Sure, the Cortisol? fight, the, the, it's actually adrenaline mm -hmm. or norepinephrine mm -hmm. uh, and epinephrine. These are the fight or flight Mm -hmm. uh, hormones and they are adaptive for when we had to you know run away from dinosaurs not that we ever coexisted with dinosaurs but <laughs> you'll be getting calls on that one <laughs> <laughs> but don't call me but um, but they uh, they also speed up the heart rate increase the blood pressure constrict the arteries uh, and clearly in animal models uh, animals that are under chronic st physiologic stress uh, develop uh, heart disease mm -hmm. one of the other things that they do is they affect our immune system, not just from the adrenal gland, but from many different parts of immunity that we're now learning are in many different parts of the body. That's really important because one of the possibilities of some kinds of heart disease may relate to immune system dysfunction and even the possibility that certain bacteria increase the amount of disease. So stress can make a difference in an enormous number of different ways. It's a bit scary to think that, you know, you might be contributing to your own illness by virtue of your personality type. What can people do to kind of thwart the type A urge if that's what they've got? It's not, it's not easy, mm -hmm. uh, but it can be altered. Um, it, does, it does take effort. It does take some learning and some training. The concept of just, well, just relax does not work. You need to learn mm -hmm. uh, stress reduction classes, yoga, uh, yoga, massage, uh, tai chi. These have been studied and have been shown to have very beneficial effects on the true physiology, the measurable levels of adrenaline, uh, the function of our arteries, uh, and clearly have had, uh, have had health outcome benefits shown. Intentionality, that's a very important issue. Having a positive attitude makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And when mommy said years ago, don't get upset, it's going to get you sick, she was absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And that's a very important point. Physicians who unfortunately sometimes make the mistake for many reasons that are certainly unintentional, when they tell people you have X amount of time to live, that's probably one of the serious mistakes that we make as healthcare professionals. Mm -hmm. We have no idea of how long people will live or the quality of life that they have. Mm -hmm. and if as a patient, you're confronted with it. You need to realize that the physician meant well, but of course they really have no idea whatsoever. And the reason I say that is, if we fix something in our mind, we're learning more and more now that there's a physiologic, a biochemical apparatus that helps us meet the time clock of what we fixed. Mm -hmm. Intentionality, our intentions, our optimism makes a difference. And there are numerous studies to support that. I would add that social supports uh, have been shown to be very, very beneficial. Um, uh, the humans were made to be social animals. So you're talking about things like group therapy? For Fri well, people that have loving families, mm -hmm. uh, friendship networks, even pets mm -hmm. have been shown to do better with exactly the same disease state than people who are loners mm -hmm. uh, who do not have these social supports. 
Well, I can't thank you enough for being with us here tonight. Nate Rebowitz and Sam Benjamin, thank you both so much for your input. And also thanks to you for joining us for this webcast. I'm Lisa Clark.